Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Got a little repair project in here that I'm going to get started on. And what we have is a, a Harley Davidson panhead engine case that is in need of a little bit of repair. And I'm doing this to help out a, an old customer from my shop. He's a, a now retired Harley Davidson mechanic and he still piddles with some of these things at home, I believe. Uh, just you know he's got a lot of knowledge with some of these older engines and and works on um, uh, restorations is uh, I think what one of the things that he kind of specializes in you know the older stuff but anyway he uh, he he caught me here at the house one one weekend and stopped by and and asked me if I was still interested in doing this stuff I've actually done this job one time before and uh, th I believe that was back when I just started doing YouTube and I don't think that I actually got this on video. I don't recall uh, filming it and uh, just, I just can't remember, but I don't think it's on YouTube. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and film this one anyway. And I'll, uh, I'll show you what we got to do. I'll get you a lot tighter shot so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But there's a, there's a counterboard hole down in this engine case where this pin seats this pin here you got a, a screw that goes through it and it's supposed to seat there down in this counter bore and I believe that is a that must be a weak point in the in the engine there it's just aluminum and over the period of years and decades that hole just kind of wallers out and then this it doesn't hold this pin the sleeve I don't know really what you'd call that some kind of bushing alignment pin I'm not really exactly sure uh, but it's supposed to hold that nice and firm so that it stays and it won't wiggle around so that is what I've got to do so this is a milling job we're going to use the do all mill and probably use the Victor Lade to make a little bushing for it so let me get you in here closer and we'll uh, I'll let you see what we got to do here so that's a better shot of the the hole that we're working with this this hole right there all right and it's it's got a helical already in the bottom of it which is fine that's probably been a, a, a repair that's done in the past but we'll zoom you in so you can see just how waller that hole is right there and if I take the the pin and you can see how loose it is all right, and it should uh, originally it just had a counter bore that that fit in very close, you know, and then you drop your screw in there and tighten it up, but that doesn't give it the right support that it that it's supposed to. So that is what we're going to do, and I've been taking some measurements with my depth mic. I've got one of my stair depth mics right here and I've been getting measurements to the to the very top of the original face there and all the way down into the bottom there and that's kind of giving me an idea of what I got to work with because uh, he wants the way I did it before is I actually cut the bottom flat the very bottom of the of the counter bore down in here we we actually cut that so it's nice and flat and then we'll cut this as well We'll, we'll bring that down just a little bit and then what we'll have is um, a bushing that kind of looks like a top hat so you'll have a face up here and then you'll have a, a bore for the the sleeve to go down in there and it'll be sitting on the sleeve in the bottom there as well and we'll make that a press fit where it'll it'll bump in probably use some loctite with it to hold it and then once it's all together it's 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 together Now, to get lined up on that right there, what he has done is that he has brought the, the case here, you know, the outer cover that goes with it. And you got some dials there that, that line it up and it's a very close fit right there. All right. So this bore, that's supposed to be the same bore. You can see it fits it really close right there. So what I do is I put this cover plate on, I've got the screws, and we'll hold it down with the, with the screws, get it set up in the mill, and I'll indicate this hole right there. And then once I get this hole indicated, you zero out your table, and then that's your location. I've got the engine case mounted up in the mill here and ready to go. 
I've got four equal tool bits that I'm using as parallels down here. Uh, some Momax uh, rectangular shaped tool bits that are all the same size uh, so that it's sitting up above that machined register that's on the bottom side. And it's actually sitting on the, the face where the two, the two cases will come together. We've got a hole down on each side and I've also got a, a brass a piece of brass shim stock in there so the clamp doesn't mar into the aluminum case there and also to provide a little bit extra grippiness there. Here's looking at the other side same thing we got a hole down and we got a piece of brass shim stock in there we got it sitting there on our tools so one thing that I that I've kind of always had a habit of doing uh, when I'm doing uh, sketchy setups Something where I'm a little worried that it might slip and move is once I get it clamped down, I kind of come in here and I, I give it a bump with my, with my hands and my body just to make sure that it is secure, that it's not going to move around, and uh, hopefully the light cuts that we got to do is not going to affect the rigidity of this setup and it'll stay in place. So now that I have it firmly fixed in place, we're going to go ahead and set the, the cover plate on. And we're going to lightly get it screwed down to where it goes. And we got the we got the two dowel pins, and then there's the other uh, the other bushing in there that's lined up with this case as well. So it's right there where it needs to be. But he gave me the screws here and some Loctite if I wanted to use it. And we'll go ahead and put some of these screws in here. I don't know how many we need, but we'll go ahead and get some in here and get it screwed down in place. Now, I don't have them tight yet. I'm just kind of running them down until they touch. All right, so I think that's going to be enough. It's just to keep the, make sure that the plate is uh, seated and that it's in its location. I'm going to start with this half inch diameter center point that was made for me by Stan Zakoski over at Shade and HKW. Real fine little tool there. It's a, a repurposed end mill. And I'm just going to use that to uh, help locate the center of the hole. And we're going to have to bring it out just a bit. Yep. dropped it down too far <laughs> all right we're gonna just use this to eyeball it just get it really close which is right there where I need it to be and we'll go ahead and lock that back down and then we'll uh, get it indicated okay we got our Blake coax indicator mounted up and that's what we're going to use to find the center of that hole this is a perfect job for an indicator like that so we're going to go ahead and stick the feeler down in the hole now I'm going to go ahead and bring it down closer to the bottom where that sleeve fits in that register because it doesn't go all the way up through here. So we've got it down there towards the bottom. I can stick my finger in there and just kind of feel it down there. All right, let's go ahead and see where we're at. Well, not too bad. About 25, about 27 thousandths. Just making the movements by hand. That's got us really, really close right there. Now what you can do, and this is what people always talk about, you can turn these on. You just gotta build a you just gotta hold the feeler right there. 
But see, this is where, we'll go ahead and move it. I like to see where that needle is at, and when it's spinning, I can't tell. So we're gonna, all right, I'm moving X travel. I'm gonna bring it back. All right, I'm gonna use the Y travel. I'm gonna bring it to me. All right, too far. All right, so that's about, that's about it. I'm on the X travel again. And we're going to leave it right there. About a half a thousandth or so, but now we know that we're lined up where that bushing needs to be. Just remember when you come out, don't let these things spring out. Just uh, let them, just back them out with your finger like that. I got a three quarter inch in mill that we're going to use to clean up that, that bore. I believe that'll I believe that'll clean it up. Let me look and see. Turn it there. Yeah, so I think that's going to clean it up. Now we'll probably counter bore it, say, with maybe a 7 8. So what we're going to do is keep up with the depth. Now I'm finally able to use digital readouts on this mill for the first time for these kind of jobs. We got the, the new all DP500 digital readout, and we've also got the Michitoya uh, reader up here on the quill. Maybe I can just show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we got our readout there, which I've got it zeroed out. And then we've got our uh, digital readout here on our, on our Z-axis or this, the quill. All right. So we're going to use this. I'm going to come down. I'm going to move the table over. We'll just go ahead and do that. So we'll do the Y-axis. And I'm going to move it over. You can see it moving up there. I'm going to bring this down until it just touches right there which I've already done and I'm going to zero it. So that's going to be our starting point and that way I will be able to easily keep up with how much depth we take with this end mill. Okay, so it looks like we went quarter inch according to the readout right there. That's 243. We may try to make it an even 250 there. Next up, I've got a 15 16 end mill in there. We're going to use that to just make a slight counter bore. Now, that is a ground end mill, it's a little bit under. Uh, I measured it being 0.915 inches, so it shouldn't be an issue, but it's nice and sharp. I hope it felt like it. So. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move the table over and I want to just touch it with the cutter so that we make it even there. I'm going to zero out the scale up here. All right, and then we'll move back and then we'll make a just make a little a little counter bore. And we're doing that so that it you can see that wear down in here. So we're attempting to try to clean some of that up, all right? And I don't want to go much bigger than that size right there because this casting is offset just a bit, so you're getting really close to that wall. But we're not cutting this all the way down. We're just going to go down a little bit. There it is, 62 thousandths, a sixteenth, and I think we're going to leave it just like that. We're going to go ahead and make our bushings. 